Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. Welcome back. In this series, I'm going to be looking at Unit 4 Programming. Still going to be BTEC Level 3 IT, but this one is going to be about programming. So, how am I going to do this one? It's going to be very similar to how I've done the previous one, which is simply go through the marking criteria or the grading criteria. So, the introduction starts like this. This unit has no exams. So, again, this is Unit 4 Programming. There is no exam for this. It is purely a coursework stroke assignment unit. Schools will have to send samples off to the exam board. So Pearsons will most likely request uh, some samples from your schools. You could be selected. If this is the very first time your school is doing this, this unit, um, it is very, very likely. So for example, if your school has gone over from doing only certificate to doing diploma, then it's very likely that it's going to be requested even on certificate. You can still get this unit done, but most schools don't do it that way. So yes, you can be chosen randomly by the exam board and, you, and your teachers will have to send the information off. So just like all the other assignments we've done, uh, for example, unit six, which I just finished, part A is going to be research. Part B is going to be where you design and develop whatever solution you have to design and develop. I will share this PowerPoint as well on the website as soon as I get that done. And it's going to have links to other resources as well. So this is what schools and teachers will normally use. It's called a like unit for a delivery guide. It's completely free from the Pearson's website. And again, this is what teachers would normally use in some cases to actually deliver the unit. So I won't be going through the teaching of the individual sections from your specification. For example, I am only going to be focusing on the coursework stuff. I'm only going to be focusing on things you need to do for the coursework. So for example, P1, M1, D1, P2, M2, D2, so on and so forth. That's the only thing. Those are the only things I'm going to be focusing on. So here we have the part A assignment brief. And this part is quite long, actually. It says P1, P2, P3, M1, and D1 all in one. So let me quickly go through what this is, or what each thing is. And then I'll move on to part B. So part uh, so P1 says, explain how computational thinking skills are applied in finding solutions that can be interpreted into software applications. I will break this down for you guys, so do not worry, do not worry. Uh, P2 is uh, explain how principles of computer programming are applied in different languages to provide software applications. P3, explain how the principles of software design are used to produce high quality software applications that meet the needs of users. And M1, analyze how computational thinking skills can impact software design and the quality of software applications produced. D1 is going to always be evaluate. Evaluate how computational thinking skills can impact software design and the quality of software applications produced. So again, this is part A. This is going to be where you research. This is the, I'm going to use the word boring here very loosely. This is where you're going to sit down, research, use the spec, use the delivery guide, use Google quite heavily, use the book and put together all the research that you found. And for part B and C, this is the assignment brief. I won't actually read all of this because it's it's on screen. You can pause and read it at any time. But here is essentially where we're going to have to design our solution. And typically what that means uh, for programming, in programming terms, you might have to do a UML diagram. You might have to do a flow chart. You might have to do, well, you most likely will have to do pseudocode and a flow chart. Those are the two I'm going to be focusing on because for your level, Pseudocode and flowchart is what you're expected to know how to use or, or to know how to use to some degree and understand to some degree. So those are the two I'll be focusing on. So where it says uh, P4, produce a design for a computer program to meet clients' requirements. The design, I'm the two types of designs I'm going to speak about are going to be um, pseudocode and flowchart. That's it. When it says review the designs with others, you're going to simply show your design to other people and ask them, what do you think about this? Just like we did for unit six, they're going to comment and say, well, I think you can improve on this. Or you can improve on that. Same process. OK, so that's part B and C for the assignment brief. You can pause and read that if, if you need to. So again, as I said, part A uh, it's a lot of information, um, but you would have given you would be given most of the information by your teachers already. So please pay attention in lesson. Don't just come here and. Uh, do everything that I'm doing. Pay attention to your lessons. Ask your teachers questions as well. Uh, but if you 
if you're not a hundred percent sure on what needs to be done you can always 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 go back to the assignment brief itself which is this stuff here you can also go back to the delivery guide which actually is a hint for teachers on what they can do to actually deliver the unit to students okay so again i will share this powerpoint on the website when it's finished um where are we again um this this is a chance to research and teach yourself as well because all the stuff that we had in the research uh, section so part a is going to be stuff that you need to know um the way i'm going to do this is similar to how university might be where you research you reference you rephrase it you put it in your own words you understand it so my typical way of explaining this is you read it you understand it fully fully understand it then you rewrite it in your own words using your own terminology as much as possible um if you can use some some it specific words that, that would be really wonderful and then you also reference it so read it uh, understand it rewrite it and reference it that's my four step process typically so you can get some baseline information and then you can do the rest so the baseline information will come from the spec and from the delivery guide you can 100 percent use google you can 100 percent use youtube but you should understand whatever you're putting in your report so so part a what i will do i will only be focusing um on how to do the assignment let me make that clear this is not the only way this is not necessarily the best way this is just how i have interpreted it your teacher might interpret it completely differently which is perfectly fine the main thing that pearson's or btech or the exam board the main thing they want to see is that you've evidenced uh, what you've done right so if they say you need to produce a design to meet the client's requirements okay we need to know what the requirements are first that's the first thing you can have a bullet point you can have a paragraph you can have sentences you can have a handwritten note from the whatever it is you need to have your requirements first once you have your requirements done then you can say okay the client say the client says that they want these list of things i can now design a system or a program to meet these list of things and then finally we're going to develop so we're going to actually sit there and program what needs to be done um through through the design and development stage i'll try to you well i will be using everything is going to be completely completely free i won't use any paid software and if it is paid software i'll make sure i find one that has like a one month free trial so you don't have to uh, keep paying to use it but more more than likely i'm going to be using python for this and I'm going to be using a website called Ripple It or Ripple IT, however you want to say it. Completely free way to program Python and many, many other languages. So I'll put the link in the description when, when that time comes as well. And you guys can check that website out. You don't have to install anything. All you need is your web browser and you're good to go. All right. So uh, simply a way to tackle the points in the assignment brief, meaning P1, P2, P3, so on and so forth. So what I'm going to be doing again and again and again is going back to the grading criteria back to the marking criteria and simply showing one way of trying to solve whatever the grading or marking criteria is saying that we need to follow right all right i will uh, try to outline the information you need i will show one way to reference there are many ways for it people engineers computer scientists we use what is called i triple e or i e e e referencing at university this link here which i'll put in the description as well is uh, is how you can do it but i'm going to show you a really easy and lazy way which is to actually use um, a website which is called a reference generator where you can just put your link in there put the name of your art put the link of your article put put the link of your website put the link of your video and it will actually generate or create the reference for you and all you have to do at that stage is simply copy that reference and paste it into your document if anyone here is a massive fan of Google Drive like I am, I'll show you an extra way to do it, which is the way I did mine at university using um, a built-in Chrome plugin called PaperPile. And what PaperPile does, it actually allows you to reference within your document without doing any extra fancy stuff. Really, really nice, really simple. But I will show the process. Um, a report is needed for part A. This can be done in presentation software like PowerPoint and exported to PDF. I highly recommend using, using sorry, a word processor then exporting to PDF. There are many word processors. You don't have to use Microsoft Word. Um, I think I have some free ones here, actually. Perfect. So Microsoft Word is a typical one. 
I do not recommend anyone, anyone at all do their entire assignment in Microsoft Word offline. If you're going to be using Microsoft Word, please, I'm begging you guys, use Word online. Now, your school typically gives you OneDrive storage for free, Office 365 stuff. Use OneDrive because it backs up your work automatically. So as soon as you stop typing, your um, so you've gone in and typed one single sentence. As soon as you stop typing, the work is saved, right? The last thing I want, which I've seen happen many, many times over the years, students losing their work. Sir, my Word document got corrupted. My hard drive failed. I don't have... Do it online. You'll never have an issue. Um, at my school, my schools, what I've done in the past is use Microsoft Teams to, to set the work for students. And I've also used Google Classroom so that I have a copy of the work. The student has a copy. And at the end of the day, at the end of every single day when they've done something, I've always said, go ahead, download that document, email it to yourself, add it to your personal OneDrive, put it on your memory stick, do whatever you want, but make sure that you've downloaded a copy as well. So you can always go back to a previous version. So if you've deleted something, if you've lost the work that you did the next day, you can always go back. So, uh, Next, I'm going to stop ranting there. Which word processor should you use? Anyone you want. I recommend the online ones, but these are some online and offline, offline ones as well. So I will put links in the description of how you can get these. LibreOffice is completely free for anyone to use on any operating system on a desktop or a laptop. WPS Office is completely free as well, and it comes with um, a Word alternative, uh, Excel alternative, and a PowerPoint alternative. OneDrive, as you know, has Word, Excel, PowerPoint online as well. And Google Docs, Google Docs, sorry, this is my favorite and in my opinion, the best one to use. It's, it's very compatible with the Microsoft stuff. It's just really, really nice to use. And I'll explain why later on when we actually start doing it. So, so general top tip, as I've said before, the cloud is your friend. Most of you watching this video, you um, are in college or in school or whatever, and you get cloud storage and cloud computing completely free with a university or school using Office 365. So make OneDrive your friend. Otherwise, you could just use Google Drive. Google Docs gives you 15 gigabytes free storage. It works perfectly fine. Um, use a system which backs up your work automatically. Now, Word offline can back up your work. However, it typically backs up to the local disk in a different location. You can set it to back up online, but I just prefer the online version. But that's just me, right? I shall show Microsoft Word and I'll show Google Docs as well. I'm going to create a Word document. I just have some instructions here on how to create a Word document. So if you're not entirely sure on how to do that, this section might be for you. Pause the video and go ahead and do that. Um, we're going to set our Word document up to have styles and formatting. And we're going to have a reference page and a front page typically. Um, for my document, I'll make the margins wider than usual. So if you do ever have to print it to give you a teacher, this is not a big deal. Don't worry too much about this part. This is simply my things that I like to do for my document. Now, do keep in mind when you go to university, your lecturers will specify every single thing. So line spacing needs to be 1.5. The text needs to be Arial. The space, um, the 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 size needs to be 11 or 12. You need to have headings and they'll tell you everything. So it's always a good idea to practice how to do these things so that when you get to university, you're not like, whoa, how do I do this thing? It's very simple. So practice them. All right. I will show them as well. So create a Google Docs and install PaperPile. This is one of the steps I will show. So don't worry in my in my first video starting P1, for example, or setting up my document, I'll show all of this. I'll show what PaperPile is. I'll show how to use it. I'll show how I use Google Docs. I will be using Google Docs for this because I just prefer Google Docs. In the previous ones, I've used Microsoft Word online. So it's always a good idea to learn multiple things so that if something happens and you think, oh, I'd actually, I don't want to use that one anymore, you can always jump over. And this is a good website as well, the Computing Tutor website. They have resources for Unit 4. Um, another good thing to use is obviously just YouTube. This is programming um, if you want to learn how to use Python quickly, because that's what I'll be using for this. Some other schools might use other languages, but Python, I think, is a very good entry-level language to teach the logic of programming because it's so clear and similar to the English language that you can read it and understand it like you would a sentence, in my opinion. If your teacher thinks differently, use whatever they say. That's perfectly fine. I think this is the end of my PowerPoint. So thank you guys for watching. 
and stay tuned for the next part which i'm going to be showing you how to set up your document how to do styles and formatting how to use the reference generator and hopefully this is helpful thank you <laughs>